Greetings, everyone. I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad that you are here. Today's topic on thinking about magic is going to be about CMC, converted mana costs matter. Of course, when we're talking about CMC, we're talking about this here thing right up here in the top corner of a card. Um, it is the combination of colored and colorless mana that gets spent on a, or generic mana, that gets spent on a card. So in this case, Selfless Savior is one CMC and Murderous Rider is three CMC, right? Um, and well, uh, when, particularly when you're doing card evaluations and things for a deck, uh, we've already talked a little bit about on previous episodes about, you know, having a curve and how important that is and things. But we didn't really explain why CMC matters. So I, I'd like to go into that a little bit today. It's going to be a short video, but there's a little more to it than just making sure you have things to cast in a timely manner. Um, one of the chief ways of evaluating cards is what does this card do for me when I'm ahead? And when, what does this card do for me when I'm behind, right? There are one of the common traps that us giant players like to fall into is this card does something really cool. But the only time it does that really cool thing is when you're already winning the game. Why don't you just turn your creatures sideways and win rather than do this really cool thing? Well, because it was a cool thing. All right, fine. But what does that card do for you when you're behind? And oftentimes, if a card is nothing, if it does nothing when you're behind, you need to be careful about that card. That doesn't mean don't include it if it's important enough, but you can't have too many other cards that do nothing while you're behind or whatever, right? Um, so one of the key pieces of that card evaluation, though, will be in convert a mana cost. Because if you spend very little mana on a card that doesn't do much for you when you're behind, um, then it's a lot more passable than if you spend a lot of mana. And importantly, one of the key ways you catch up in Magic is to cast two spells in a turn. Everyone loves casting their six drop. But first of all, if you die while the six drop is in your hand, it actively held you back. And secondarily, if you cast your six drop because you're behind, because you've had a six drop in your hand all game, uh, and it doesn't do anything to catch you up, that could mean that uh, you should have been back in this card. Now, in this case, I'm showing you Masker Worm, which is the type of card that, what does it do when you're ahead? Well, it's a 6-5 that when you kill their creatures, they lose two life. What does it do for you when you're behind? If your opponent's going wide, it gives all the creatures minus two, minus two. This is the kind of card that's at least good when you're ahead, and it's typically good when you're behind. So this is the type of card that can be really good. Now, does that mean every black deck wants it? Of course not right? That's the, the joy of deck building. But uh, it is notable as a six mana card. If you have six lands in play, you don't get to cast a six drop and something else. No, no, no. You have this one card. So if your six drop does not do anything for you when you're behind, you need to be careful, okay? So how? what are other classic examples of why it would be important to have a lower CMC? Well, because when you cast your small thing, you can then also perhaps use an interaction spell like Murderous Rider or something like that. Uh, if you have cheap interaction like uh, counter spells, maybe you'll spend that mana drawing cards on their turn if they don't um, tap out. But also, if your CMC is low enough on your interaction, you can maybe save four mana for card draw, but then save up two mana for two different uh, counter spells and be able to counter two spells in a turn, right? Um, and that double spell is what can turn these small advantages you've accrued into game wins later on down the road. So there are a few kind of cheat codes, uh, at least currently in standard, uh, that help you get around this, where you get two cards for the price of one. Um, and that would notably be, and the most, you know, notable card of them, in my opinion, is Bone Crusher Giant. This card is very, very good. Do not underestimate this card. It is a two-mana shock effect. That's not great. But the fact that it's also a three-mana Bone Crusher Giant means that in the early game, it's interaction, but it also blocks really well. Uh, in the later on game, if you do have five mana, darn it, you get to cast two spells in a turn. You get to interact and cast a four-three. 
this is hopefully removing something from their board and advancing your own. These sorts of things are, uh, you know, will translate to lots of wins for you. In that same way, Murder Rider, if you are playing a more grindy or slower deck, maybe lots of interaction, there will be a non-zero number of times where you're just like, I've got to get a removal spell in the next three cards. When it's Murderous Rider, you get to kill their thing and then tap three more lands, if you have six, obviously, and cast a Murderous Rider as well. So it both removes the thing you needed to get rid of, a Planeswalker or problematic creature, and advances your board as well. Can be a very, very powerful card. Uh, the other notable cheat codes in Standard right now, and there will be more coming up, are MDFCs. Um... Uh, where it's one thing on one side and something else on the other side. The notable ones in standard before call time are lands on one side and spells on the other. This one happens to be a, an example of a counter spell, and I just, you know, put this one in here, but all of them serve this purpose. They do something for you in that they're a land. They make sure you're continuing to hit your land drop, but they also do something for you later on. So particularly the mythic rare versions of them, um, they allow you a really expensive card and then don't have the cost like Massacre Worm of it just sitting in your hand and rotting in your hand and rotting in your hand and like, I don't know if I can ever uh, win this game because darn it, I just can't cast my card and I'm stuck on lands. Well, darn it, these mythic MDFCs will give you that haymaker of a spell, very, very powerful spell that just comes out of nowhere and, you know, gets your opponent, but also doesn't leave you stranded on land. So very, very important cards, particularly in standard, but also in historic as well, and worthwhile things as well. On this topic, I would also like to include uh, another little facet to this discussion, and that's lands that do something. In the same way that I was just extolling the praises of the MDFCs, other lands such as the Castle Cycle that allow you to take mana you have and invest it to get some kind of return. If you show me a 4-mana 1-1, one, one, it had better do something pretty darn good or I'm not decking that card. But the downside on this land is so small that just getting a 1-1 one, one when the game is devolved into doing nothing that is progress. The game is not ground to a complete halt while my opponent and I go trade back and forth drawing meaningless cards. We, I am advancing my board with, you know, Castle Ardenvale specifically, or drawing cards with Castle Loctwain, or scrying, um, or, or whatever the, you know, the case may be. These sorts of lands, very important in your deck building decisions uh, for their CMC. What is their CMC? Well, of course, their lands, right? They're they allow you to inflate your land count maybe a little more than you normally might uh, in the same way that MDFC is, MDFCs do. So you don't miss your land drops. So you can cast your large spells. And more importantly, so you can cast two spells in a turn later on in the game, all the while not forcing you to be flooded out in the conventional sense where you have nothing to do. So um, I really appreciate everybody tuned in. Uh, we'll get out of the next episode here in just a few minutes. But darn it, uh, thanks for watching. If you don't mind dropping a like that really helps uh the channel a lot uh come on out and see us at the twitch channel that's down in the description below as well but you folks have a wonderful wonderful day and i'll catch you next time